Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents Good News Today, featuring an inspiring gospel teaching by Father Jim Willing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Seems appropriate as we begin a new year together, that we would hear about Jesus' beginning of his ministry that we just heard related in this gospel passage. We see in Jesus' baptism the initiation of his public ministry. We realize that Jesus had left his home and his mother and his carpentry trade in Nazareth to come all the way down to the Jordan River, which, by the way, is a distance of some 60 miles as a crow flies, but as the journey on foot would take him winding and scurrying about the hillsides, it would take several days to walk from Nazareth to the place along the Jordan where Jesus was baptized and where John was preaching. And so I point that out to say it's significant that Jesus went out of his way. In other words, he just wasn't a passerby who happened to notice a lot of people gathering around the Jordan and happened to meander over there to see what was going on. Instead, this was a very deliberate journey that designated a break from his private life and making a decisive move to a very public ministry. He was beginning something very, very significant, that is, the mission for which he was sent. And it's also significant to me that it takes place at about the very vicinity where the Israelites were led into the promised land. You remember Joshua, succeeding Moses, led the people across the Jordan into what is now known as Israel. And we hear in this gospel, John leading the people, in a sense, as a bridge over these troubled waters from the Old Testament to the New Testament times, introducing the Savior that would bring about this new age. And he begins by saying, One more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. I have baptized you in water. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. We could imagine that John said this because it could easily have been misunderstood that one who was baptized would become a disciple of the baptizer, right? And therefore, people could misinterpret John as being superior to Jesus. And so he had to set people straight that he wasn't even fit to untie his sandal strap, which, by the way, John was probably noticing being done, you know, as people were entering into the Jordan. And that was the role of a servant or slave. And John says, I don't even rank that high when it comes to the one who comes to us. Not baptizing with water as I do, but baptizing 
in the power of the Holy Spirit. John's baptism, we know, was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. So people have often asked down through the ages, then why would Jesus, who was without sin, enter into these waters and be baptized by John? Perhaps it is because Jesus wanted to identify himself with humanity so completely and taking upon himself our burden of sin so as to lead us into that water where we could be cleansed and purged of that sin forever, leading us out of that water, not unlike Joshua, into a whole new promised land that is a place of relationship with God. And then we see in this reading, described for us this mighty vision that Jesus had. We're told immediately on coming out of the water, Jesus saw the sky rent in two, the Spirit descending on him like a dove, and then a voice came from the heavens, you are my beloved Son. On you my favor rests. Obviously, this is a powerful spiritual experience for Jesus. And Scripture scholars would say this truly was the launching, the takeoff of Jesus into his powerful public ministry. It was the, if you will, the Spirit so filling him it propelled him from there forth to go in that power, that same spirit. But I'd like to take this vision and just try to describe it a moment, uh, taking the three elements that we can see here, the first of which is the sky was rent in two. Or in other words, the heavens were open. In Isaiah chapter 63, verse 16, we hear the words, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. In other words, this was a prayer of Israel that God would just break open the heavens and come down to earth. We have a certain term for that when we say, Oh, my God, may lightning strike you. you know? In other words, may God just intervene in our life in a powerful and personal way. This biblical vision or prayer to this particular baptismal event remind us that this prayer that God would intervene, that God would powerfully communicate with his people is happening in the person and the mission of Jesus Christ. He is that person who opens up the heavens for us. He is that person that God come down to earth to come to us, to bring us a whole new life. He is that one. And can you see that? And then we're told the Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. I often like to point out to people now, don't confuse the Holy Spirit with the big bird. You know, It's like a dove. It's a simile, not the same. What do we mean by dove? Obviously, it's it's a beautiful and most traditional symbol of the Spirit that I think is very appropriate because the dove seems to suggest a gentle, peaceful way that the Spirit usually seems to work in our lives. It almost comes like gradually and falls on us in a way that you can almost miss the Spirit's presence unless you're really alert and awake to the way the Spirit comes to us. This is how the Spirit comes on Jesus, like a dove. It's also interesting, as I learned this week in researching this passage, that the dove had been a symbol for Israel, that rabbis would refer to the chosen people as a dove. And... So we often see that dove carrying a symbol of peace, that Israel was to be seen as the people of peace, and thus Jesus as a representative of the new Israel, leading them again to that new promised land. And finally, the third element of this vision, we hear the voice that came from out of the heavens, 
You are my beloved son. On you, my favor rests. Interestingly, in Mark's account of the baptism, unlike the other synoptics, Jesus alone hears this voice. And yet, clearly, this seems to indicate that Jesus had a profound inner sense that he was a beloved son of God and that God's favor, his power, was being given to him. Now, it was so compelling and overwhelming that it will move Jesus to retreat first in the desert to face Satan and overcome his temptation and then begin this powerful anointed ministry where he heals and works miracles and helps to save his people. The question, of course, we might add is, do such experiences happen to people? I immediately think of St. Francis of Assisi, who was one day praying in the small chapel of San Damiano in Assisi of Italy, and he heard this voice of Christ speak from the crucifix, Francis, I want you to rebuild my church, which you can see is in ruin. And from that powerful spiritual experience, from that voice of God that Francis heard, he began this whole wonderful ministry that we have the legacy of today in the Franciscan movement. I think of another person, not unlike Francis of Assisi yesterday, is Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who you might recall, if you're familiar with her story, was riding on a train one day, going back to that place in Calcutta where she was a member of this religious order that taught wealthy young girls in a private school. That voice, so crystal clear that only she heard, was that she was to leave the comfort and confines of her convent and move out into the streets to attend to the poorest of the poor. She trusted that voice, followed that voice, and we see how God has used this woman to change the face of the earth, I think through the great work of the Holy Spirit. But still the question remains, yeah, I believe this can happen to Francis of Assisi, I believe it can happen to, to Mother Teresa of Calcutta, but what about you and me, right? I mean, can we have any kind of Jordan experience ourselves? Well, allow me to share a little more personally an experience that I was blessed to have in the Jordan River about a year and a few months ago. As you know, I had the great fortune of taking a three-month sabbatical studying scripture in the Holy Land. And one of our first visits of our class to the sacred sites was to go to that very place on the Jordan River where tradition has long held that in about that vicinity, Jesus would have been baptized by John the Baptist. You can appreciate the thrill that I felt to be right there and then, to be at that site where Jesus entered into these waters. And as is often the case with me, I have a very active imagination. And I tried to imagine in my mind what it would have been like to have been back then and there with John the Baptist and Jesus. I wanted and I prayed that maybe, maybe... I could experience something of what they experienced that day. And so, like so many of the other pilgrims who came to that place with me, I too took off my shoes and socks and waded into the shallow waters of the Jordan and prayed and asked for a friend of mine to come over. By the way, his name was Jesus. He was a Mexican seminarian who was a Franciscan. And I, being with such a name, I said, Jesus, come here and pour some water over my head 
and pray that something good happened. And he did. And needless to say, much to my disappointment, I might add, the heavens did not open, the dove did not descend, and I promise you I heard no voices. And I wondered, what is the big difference between Jesus' experience in the Jordan and my lack of much of an experience in the same waters. And it struck me as I recalled what I was taught about Jesus' baptism, that to begin with, John would not have poured a little water over the head of Jesus. He would have helped Jesus to enter himself into the waters and be totally immersed in the river Jordan. In other words, herein lies the difference. Jesus was totally immersed in this total commitment, this total abandonment into the total life of his Father. And when you enter that deeply into those waters of God's grace and goodness, the Spirit does come. And you come out of that experience a different person with a new sense of your mission. And it occurred to me as I was standing and willing to only go knee-deep and get a little wet that I was perhaps standing in a familiar place of many people who come to church today and are only willing to get their feet wet, so to speak, in the spiritual life. Who These people of us who are only enter into what I would consider the very shallow end of the pool of God's grace, and we hardly really submerge ourselves into the depths of prayer that God invites us to experience. I would say that there are few Christians, even today, who become totally immersed in God's life and in God's love. Would you agree? There are few of us who are willing to take the plunge, so to speak, into a total commitment to God's service, to the poor, and to the needy, to totally abandon ourselves to the Lord and what he wants of us. And so today, after praying with this gospel, I come to ask you if you would be willing to take the plunge, if you would be willing to recommit yourself to our baptismal promises where water was probably poured over our head, but we have only have an inkling, if you will, just the sprinkling of the grace that's to become a deeper fountain within us, that we've got to be willing to take the next step. Now, I believe when we are willing to enter into these depths of the mighty waters of God's amazing grace, I do believe the heavens do open for us. I do believe the Spirit does come upon us. And I do believe we can hear the voice of God speak to us. And I'd like to share with you, again, personally and briefly, that was just my experience being on retreat last week at the Gethsemane Monastery in Trappist, Kentucky. When I had a chance to be with my two brothers, pray with them, to enter into the, these, if you will, the quiet and the solitude. For often, it, isn't there a phrase, it's still waters run deep. And I think in the stillness of our soul, when we silent ourselves, we can really enter into the deeper indwelling of God in us. You see that now that we are all baptized, we already are 
in the water. It's just that we've got to be willing to come to the deeper end. It really has no end. It has an infinite depth, grace, truth, and life, and love for us. We've got to be willing to step out, to go deeper. And it does ask more of us. It is frightful, you know, for some of us who don't know how to swim in the Spirit to go into those waters that threaten to be over our head in God, huh? It's frightful. But that's the call to faith. That's the radical call to trust ourselves to go completely under, so to speak. We could be completely raised up a new person. And when I enter into that environment on retreat as it was last week with these holy men at Gethsemane who come and can you believe they wake up at three o'clock in the morning? Not I, but uh, I wasn't ready to take that plunge yet. But seven times a day they come together in the chapel to sing praise to God. Seven times a day, all through the day, the various hours. They live a life of sacrifice. Many sacrifices of silence, fasting, of praying. And somehow when you're with such holy people, as maybe they remind me a little of John the Baptist, they somehow have a way of inviting us into a deeper experience of prayer, a deeper commitment to the Lord, and of listening and waiting for the Spirit to come. And it was interesting in my retreat there, I was able to share a moment with my brothers how they heard the Spirit speak to them. A word that told them the same thing which I think Jesus heard himself, you are my beloved son. It's what God always wants to say to us, I love you. I really love you. You are my beloved daughter. And my favor rests on you. We need to keep hearing it, don't we? But we need to keep going back to those waters that water of prayer, that water of wherever we experience the presence of God, wherever that is, we need to retreat there. And interestingly, both my brothers shared with me that when they heard that, they also came to a new and deeper appreciation of their vocation, father to their family. As Christian businessman, as disciple of the Lord. And it's, it seems like as soon as we experience God, we're also connected more intimately to God's people. And so it's no wonder that when you come out of that experience or come home from that kind of retreat, you do feel a renewed sense of commitment. And I hope and I pray that, that I could come back here And as we begin this new year in preaching and and understanding the gospel, that I could experience the Spirit anointing me a little more. That I could open myself up to Jesus speaking this word a little more powerfully through the gospel as we study it and open ourselves to that experience. And I could see myself, and I hope you could see yourselves, being invited in a manner of speaking, to the Jordan here. Whenever we come before the Lord and enter into his gospel, we do enter into that place where heaven meets the earth and where the voice of God, the word of God, speaks to us and where his spirit does come upon us and inspire us. And so in concluding, I want to say loudly and clearly, I believe we too can and must have the same kind of spiritual experience of the Spirit of Jesus again and again and again. Not that we can fabricate it, not that we can even schedule it. It's only by the gift and grace of God that it happens. It's truly by His initiation and invitation, but that we need to deliberately, decisively go out of our way to open ourselves to the outpouring of that water, that wisdom of the Spirit of God. 
And the question we need to ask time and again is, are we ready and willing to totally immerse ourselves in God's love and in God's life? Are we ready to take the plunge into greater service to God and to one another? Jesus is inviting us to that experience right now. Amen. Heart to Heart welcomes you back next week for another inspiring edition of Good News Today. If you are interested in other books, CDs, DVDs, or digital downloads by Father Jim or Father Michael, you can call toll-free 1-877-208-4875 or visit our website, www.heartoheart.org. There, you can also sign up to receive a weekly reminder to listen to these same programs online. And please, consider a donation of any size to help support Heart to Heart's radio and internet ministry. That's www.heartoheart.org or call 1-877-208-4875. Thank you for listening and may God bless your heart and the hearts of all of your loved ones. Heart to Heart